everybody. Welcome to those of you who aren't part of NRG Systems. It's it's not on. Do I? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I'm just going to turn this right over to Congressman Peter Welsh. I'm delighted to have him here, and um, and then we'll all just have a few things to say to you. So, Peter, come on up. Thank you. Okay. Well, I I want to uh, I want to say thank you uh, to NRG uh, for the tour. But I really want to say thank you to NRG and the employees uh, for the fantastic work that you're doing uh, in renewable energy, alternative energy, and wind energy. The jobs you're creating, uh, the clean planet that we're trying to uh, establish, uh, and hang it in there when the policy support you need is under assault in Washington. Uh, you know, it, it's something wrong when a mature industry uh, like the oil industry is still getting $40 billion in tax breaks, uh, it makes a trillion dollars in profits in the past 10 years, and we've got this opportunity with an emerging industry, uh, not just wind, but wind and solar, efficiency, where there's jobs to be made, where there's people with enormous skill, engineering skill, production and manufacturing skill, to create jobs here in America, put people to work, export products and make a cleaner uh, energy future. That is within our grasp. And what's inspiring to me as I walk around NRG is it's really happening. And I wish I could have every single one of my colleagues in Congress to join me to see smart people doing good work creating jobs here in the state of Vermont, because this can be replicated around the country. Now, we've got uh, two issues right now a short-term issue with high gas prices. And there's some things that we can and should do, but that's not the topic of today's uh, press conference. But we have a long-term challenge, and the long-term challenge is to have a clean energy, renewable energy economy. We can do that if we take some concrete steps at the policy level to make it possible to people like folks here at NRG to be successful in their work. The four things that I'm supporting right now are, one, we do have to extend the energy uh, production tax credit. That's up in the air. If we don't have it, it's really going to be a devastating blow to wind, uh, particularly to the wind industry. You know, one of the things that everyone needs if you're going to make a commitment of resources is some predictability. And you cannot have predictability if every single year there's a free-for-all fight in Congress about whether we're going to maintain a policy that has to be continuous in order for people to make real-world commitments of cash, for entrepreneurs to be able to, to be willing to put their livelihoods at stake, to ask your workers to be willing to keep showing up for work. So predictability is absolutely essential, and I'm going to continue to work with my colleagues, Senator Leahy and Sanders and others, to restore and extend the production tax credit. Second, the 1603 grant program has been very effective. It was created under the American Recovery Act, and it provided direct grants to do energy projects. Let's keep that going. That brought to Vermont $46 million that was put to really good work, creating jobs in, in, in anchoring uh, the alternative energy economy. Third, the Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Program at the Department of, uh, Department of Energy has to be funded. Uh, the President has asked for $2.3 billion. That's less than it should be. I'd support more. But why wouldn't we make a commitment of resources to give a leg up to entrepreneurs, to engineers that are figuring out ways efficiently to bring products to scale and to market that are going to make jobs in their local economies. We should do that. You know, two projects that benefited by grants right here in Vermont, one was Northern Power, $897,000 for commercialization of a 400 kilowatt gearless midsize wind turbine. Another one was uh, uh, $719,000 for the smart grid. And we've got our utilities working together. That can save people money. That can, uh, it, it, it can make it much more efficient. And then a fourth thing that I'm working on, I'm co-sponsoring legislation called the Homes Act, bipartisan, with my colleague from West Virginia, Congressman McKinley. And what that 
says basically is less is more. If we help homeowners and owners of commercial buildings with some taxpayer dollars that they match with their own dollars to retrofit their homes and their businesses, you're going to use less energy. You're going to save money. We've got 27% unemployment in the building trades. It's not likely that we're going to be back to the housing boom. Those people have skills and they can put them to work in retrofitting. So why not create the jobs, particularly when 95% of the materials are made in America? They're manufactured right here. So that's going to give a boost to the manufacturing economy as well. So the point of these four long-term initiatives is essentially to create the policy support so that people with the skills that you have have a chance to succeed. And if you succeed, it builds on itself. You get to scale. The more your products are out there, the more people see that they work, the more that they are able, you're able to bring costs down because you've increased the production in scale, the more uh, jobs we have, the cleaner energy we have, and the more we intensify that competitive edge that we're trying to create with the good work here. So that's the objective. You're on the front lines. My job, Senator Leahy, Senator Sanders, is to try to help you succeed. Now, we've got three people who are on the front lines providing incredible leadership in Vermont. Uh, Jan Blittersdorf of NRG, and <clears throat> each of these folks is going to uh, speak. Uh, Martha Staskus of, uh, of uh, Rev. Martha, you're going to speak. You can't dodge it. <laughs> and Sanjeev Chowdhury from Draker Laboratories, where I just had a visit a couple of weeks ago. And you guys are doing amazing work as well. Uh, I somehow, some way, want to bring Speaker Boehner back here to walk around and have this whole uh, debate about energy get off this ideological, uh, theological uh, <laughs> argument about whether there is or isn't climate, uh, climate change into the practical, real world of these are jobs that Vermonters and Americans want to do and can do. So, uh, Jan, you want to get us started? Thank you. Well, thank you, Peter. Again, I'm, I'm Jan Blittersdorf, CEO of NRG Systems. And, it, you know, it's a real honor to host Peter here and Martha, who's the chairperson of Renewable Energy Vermont, and, and uh, uh, Sanjeev from Draker Labs, um, to talk about renewable energy and the promise it holds for our community, our economy, and our environment. And I just want to thank all of you for your leadership. Peter, I, I, I always feel like I get the easy end of the stick when I go down to D.C. and they send us to talk to our congressional delegation. And you're so supportive, and you get it, and you understand, and it's kind of like talking to the choir. I, I feel very fortunate that I don't have to go see some of the other people who don't, don't <laughs> get it quite so much. So it, it's wonderful to have you. And, and Martha for leading the renewable energy uh, effort here in Vermont, and Sanji for your Draker's work in, in creating a vibrant um, solar industry. It's wonderful. I'd like to just speak briefly about the state of wind power right here in the United States and tell you a little bit about what uncertainty really means for a business like us at NRG Systems. Um, so just a little bit of background for those of you who are not part of the company. We're a 30-year-old company. Um, we manufacture measurement systems for wind energy. Uh, we've been serving developers, utilities, turbine manufacturers, anybody who might want to look at a site and see what that potential is to develop a wind farm uh, ahead of time. Um, just more recently, we've gotten into the solar industry as, as well, as our customers are doing both. They're not just looking at a site for wind, but they're looking at it for wind and solar at the same time. And we've certainly seen the ups and downs of what we're talking about with the PTC over the years. And certainly this is it's critical, a critical time this year, um, one of the most challenging times we've ever seen as an industry. You know, as Peter said, unlike other energy sectors, the tax credits to support wind energy expire every one to five years. So this is an issue all the time. It's not like the fossil fuels where it's kind of baked into the code and nobody really understands what the subsidies look like. This discussion is coming up every one to five years for renewable energy. And it puts us at a real disadvantage when you're trying to be competitive in the playing field. Um, so every year that we see the production tax credit is on and in place, 
you see good growth in terms of, of wind power in the nation. And the year after it expires or the year that it, it gets extended in the 11th hour, you see installed capacity around our nation just plummet. And that's, that's the state we're in um, today. And, you know, I'd submit that every business, no matter what industry you went, you're in, needs some sort of certainty to plan. You need to know what you're, what you're headed for. And this is especially true if you're a manufacturer because you've got people to build a product, you've got a supply chain, you've got planning to do to make sure that you've got a return on your investment and your facilities and everything else. Um, I need to know what my customers are planning for. And in, in terms of the production tax credit, it's not us who are going to directly benefit from it as a company. It's our customers who need that. And we need to know what they're doing so that we can plan our activities. Um, as a company, we've taken the long view of, of business. Uh, I'm really proud of the fact that we haven't done any layoffs during this downturn that we've seen over the last three years. I am confident that this industry is going to turn around at some point, and I'm going to need every single one of these people in, these, in this room to do the work that, that we do. And it's painful in the short term, but it's, I think it's the right thing for business. It's the right thing for wind energy. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've seen firsthand this boom and bust cycle of the PTC, and the problem now is there's so much at stake. This is a much larger industry than it used to be. There's over 400 facilities in the nation that are manufacturing and supporting uh, wind turbine manufacturers and wind turbines. This is a tw and there's a 12-fold growth in the terms of the domestic content of wind turbines just in the last six years. And we've got 75,000 people working in this industry. It, there, there's a lot, a lot at stake. Um, and I, I know, I've heard, that there are many developers and manufacturers that actually have plans to, to close plants, lay off workers, shift to other forms of business if this PTC isn't extended. It's, it's really pretty serious. Uh, just here at, at NRG, we're off about 50% of what we were uh, revenue-wise a couple of years ago. And fortunately, we have a pretty uh, uh, significant international business uh, and that's really holding us, and we're continuing to pursue other opportunities overseas while the, the, the U.S. Indus, industry flounders a bit. So I just, just, just to conclude, I just want to say that failure to extend the production tax credit now is really a lost opportunity. It's a lost opportunity to reduce dependence on fossil fuels, to employ people and keep jobs, and to own the technologies. It's really about our U.S. global competitiveness, and I'm really kind of afraid that we're going to lose our edge. We have the know-how. We have the capability to lead the world in green technology, and some of it is right here in Vermont. And uh, extending this production tax credit is going to help us realize that promise. So thank you. Thank you again. That was great. Thank you. Well, as Peter alluded to, I'm not uh, one for a whole lot of words here, so <laughs> I avoid this podium as much as I can. Uh, but I, I'm here. My name is Martha Staskis. I work for a company, uh, Northeast Wind, so I'm actually from the wind development industry. Um, I'm a wind developer and worked on all, of, all but one of the five major projects in the state of Vermont. Uh, so I'm, and I'm also the chair of the board of Renewable Energy Vermont. So I'm here with two hats today. One is representing Renewable Energy Vermont, but also uh, representing the wind industry in particular. So Congressman Welch, on behalf of Re Renewable Energy Vermont and the wind industry in particular, thank you for your ongoing support of renewable energy businesses and industries in Vermont. Your continued legislative initiatives and support for renewables have resulted in strengthening not only Vermont's economy, but protecting our environment as well. Through your leadership, Vermont energy-related jobs are thriving, and they're growing in the wind, solar, biomass, and other countless indirect jobs that relate have benefited from the growth as well. We now have contractors that have worked in traditional industries such as rail construction and concrete, uh, cross-training their employees to work in our renewable sector. Right down the road, electrical boards are manufactured in Bristol for uh, the wind and solar businesses, um, energy, all earth renewables, cable assemblies, metalwork, fabrication, installation. These are all jobs that are growing as a result of the wind industry and the renewable energy businesses. Speaking specifically on behalf of uh, Georgia Mountain Community Wind, which is a four-turbine project that is beginning construction now. It's in Milton and Georgia. This project is actually going to be directly benefiting from the six, Section 1603 uh, grant program. 
we ought to get it in the ground by the end of the year. <laughs> We're on a fast track. Um, it will support Vermont's construction trades, as has the Sheffield Wind Project in previous years. The Kingdom Community Wind Project is now. Georgia Mountain will generate clean, renewable energy for Vermonters. It will serve the directly serve the Burlington Electric Department, and it will contribute over $2 million to the State Education Fund over the life of its pro generating plant. These projects illustrate the positive impact on Vermont's economy that result across the host of trades and professional businesses, including electrical, civil engineering, environmental sciences, cultural resources, legal, landscape, architectural services, and, on, and so on. The projects represent, these types of projects represent the future, but the future will be uncertain at best without the extension of the important right. work that you're doing. So thank you again. Uh, Vermont's in wind industry, the solar industry, our solar hot water companies, and the indirect businesses that benefit from your efforts. Thank you for your perseverance in this important legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Sanji, Sanji Chowdhury of uh, Draker Labs that is doing absolutely tremendous work in solar. Absolutely tremendous. Thank you. Sanji, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you to Jan and Energy for hosting us today. And, of course, thank you, Congressman Welch, for your uh, untiring efforts on behalf of uh, renewable energy through federal policy. Mm -hmm. um, one of those policies that uh, has been alluded to is the Section 1603 Treasury Grant Program. And uh, unfortunately, it expired at the end of last year. And uh, hopefully, we can get it reinstated through the, uh, the efforts of our congressional delegation and others. Uh, Jan alluded to the importance of federal policy in supporting the wind industry. And the same is the case for solar. Um, in solar, we actually have a name for it. Uh, we call it the solar coaster, the up and down of, uh, of policy, and how it, how it affects the industry in general. Uh, perhaps in wind, we call it the wind whipsaw or something yeah. like that. It has the same effect, uh, the ripple effect throughout the industry. It's, uh, it's really easy to get lost in the, uh, in the ins and outs, the arcana of federal policy. Uh, so, to, you know, maybe to cut more to the chase, what exactly does Section 1603 Treasury Grant Program mean to Vermonters? Uh, Draker's case is a great example to illustrate that. Uh, Draker, for those of you who don't know, is a global leader in solar monitoring and asset management. Uh, we monitor the output of solar power plants, and we compare that to uh, meteorological data uh, to tell you how is your plant performing. And we can also help you understand how, what's the best way to operate and maintain that plant for maximum output. Um, we're a global leader in this uh, sector, and we're based right here in Vermont in Burlington. Uh, we sell our products and services into solar power plants at the time they're constructed and their ongoing um, uh, operations and maintenance. So, simply put, the more solar power plants, the more solar arrays that are constructed, the more opportunity for Draker. Uh, the 1603 grant program is a great example of how federal policy can help create that type of opportunity. Uh, the grant program was uh, instated in 2009 as part of the uh, ERA Act. Uh, in February 2009, it expired at the end of, or was set to expire at the end of 2010, but was extended for another year. Uh, through the end of 2011. Uh, unfortunately, it was not further extended, but during that three-year period of uh, 2009 through the end of 2011, uh, this grant program was responsible for uh, the installation of one gigawatt, roughly one gigawatt of solar capacity in the United States. To put that into perspective, that's approximately the same uh, capacity as one nuclear power plant. So that's pretty good. And it's roughly a third of the total installed uh, non-residential solar generating capacity in the U.S. So this program has really driven uh, growth in solar power plants. Um, not surprisingly, during that same period of time, 2009 through 2011, uh, since Draker's growth is very tightly tied to the construction of new plants, uh, we've also seen our business grow dramatically. Uh, we've grown over 200 percent each year in each of those three years. Uh, and during that time, our employment here in Vermont has risen from less than 10 employees to over 50 employees. So 
it's really this type of policy that's helped to drive renewable energy uh, growth and the opportunity for companies like Draker. Uh, beyond the specific opportunity for us to sell to, uh, to companies that are building plants and operating plants, we've also, as a business, utilized the Treasury 1603 grant program uh, to uh, uh, fund and begin construction of our own solar array. So that provides jobs here locally as well. So while state policies and renewable portfolio standards uh, at various states across the country are very instrumental in driving uh, solar plant growth, Federal policy also has a very prominent role, and uh, we're very thankful to Congressman Welch and others to help continue to be consistent and put these types of policies in place so uh, we all have a great solar coaster ride. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you all very much. We've got work to do, right? Yes. All right. Thank you.